ladies and gentlemen. Now, this chapter is going to focus on the writing process. Now, when we say process, it means there are steps. If you write about Cairo, for example, do you have enough information about Cairo in order to be able to write about it? If not, you need to read. And then you need to write. So the first step is to read and then to write and then to read what you have written and possibly correct whatever mistakes you need to correct and revise in order to produce the best piece of writing on Cairo that you can produce. Now, when we talk about writing as a process, we talk about producing a sentence and then a sentence to follow and another in order to produce a paragraph. So the paragraph has to be a unit composed of a few sentences about a certain focus. Now, what is a sentence? Of course, when we say what is a sentence, we are going to discuss the definition of sentence. And then we're going to discuss the definition of a paragraph. Now, in your grammar courses 1103 and 1202, you have covered many rules that you have to remember and you have to use these rules in order to write correct English sentences. But what is an English sentence? It is a grammatical string of words that introduces a piece of information and or a claim. Now, what is a claim? So, what you observe by now is whenever we use a term, a mustalah, we have to define the term so that your listener or your reader understands what you're talking about. So, a sentence has to be grammatical and the first sentence in the paragraph has to make a claim. Now, as you see on the screen, I am referring to your grammar courses. Why am I doing that? Because I would like you to understand that what you do in one course has to be remembered and you have to make use of it in all your other courses. So, what you do in your grammar course affects your writing course and what you do in your writing course affects your literature courses. And what you do in your writing courses also affects your translation courses. Okay, so a sentence in English has to have a subject and a verb. Now, think of sentences in Arabic. Do they have to have a verb? Not necessarily. And this is why when we write in English, we have to remember that in English, a sentence without a verb is not grammatical. Now, in Arabic, we don't have capital letters. In English, we do. In Arabic, we can understand that the sentence is a question without using a question mark, like, the very famous Quranic ayah, هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ This is a question, and a very important question, but it is understood as a question without really having a question mark. In English, it doesn't work that way. So, an Arabic sentence must not have a verb, and there are no capital letters in Arabic, but an English sentence must have a verb and must start with a capital letter. Now, a sentence in English can be simple. My name is Lubna. And a sentence in English can be 
complex. I have been teaching at Cairo University for 14 years, and these have been years of learning and production. This is a complex sentence. So if the idea is simple, it is expressed in a simple sentence. If the idea is complex, it is expressed in a complex sentence. So what do we do in a paragraph now? What is a paragraph? Now, a paragraph is a series of sentences. So a sentence is a series of words, and a paragraph is a series of sentences dealing with one focus, one claim. And this claim is in the first sentence of the paragraph. Now, what is a claim? The word claim can be used as a noun and as a verb. As a noun, it means a point of view. I have a claim to this piece of land. It means that this piece of land is mine. Now, I can use the word claim as a verb. So, I claim that I am the best teacher in the world. Is this a good claim? Of course it is not. I will never be able to compare myself to all the teachers in the world, and I will never be able to convince my reader that that is true. And therefore, I have to be logical in introducing my claim, and I have to be able to provide support and evidence for this claim. So there is a good claim and a bad claim. And of course, bad claims have to be avoided. So acquiring the skill to think of a good claim, to write a good paragraph will help you because an essay or a research paper is a group of paragraphs. So your starting point is to write a good paragraph with a good claim in the topic sentence, in the first sentence of the paragraph. This claim should be interesting and you should provide support, evidence, and analysis for this claim. Now, there is more to say about a paragraph. So, you have an idea, but if you write it in incorrect English or an incorrect sentence, your reader is not going to understand the idea. So, you have to make sure that the topic sentence in your paragraph is introduced in good English. Now, you're going to convince your reader of the point you make in the claim. And therefore, your ideas have to be organized in a logical way. So, you take the reader by the hand and you have a clear purpose, which is to attract the reader and to convince the reader. And in this case, when you do, you have succeeded in writing a good topic sentence, followed by sentences that develop the idea, that explain the claim, that convince the reader of the point you want to make. Now, the topic sentence introduces the point you want to make, and it has controlling ideas to support this point. So, you are going to introduce the point of view, and generally, you are going to introduce three ideas to support this point of view. So, each idea will be analyzed or developed in a sentence or two, and therefore, the paragraph should be at least seven to eight sentences long. Now, 
Here is a sample of a paragraph, and the paragraph is about Cairo. The bullet points show you the number of sentences you have in this paragraph. Now, I separated the sentences so that I can clearly show that there are differences between the lengths of the sentences. How many sentences do you have in this paragraph? One, two, three, four, five, six. You have six sentences. Now, one of them is very long and one of them is very short. Now, we're going to go through the different sentences of the paragraph in order to see how the sentences are organized. Now, the first sentence starts with, from the strategic point of view, the capital of Egypt has always been at the head of the delta between Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt under different names for more than 6,000 years. Now, this is a claim. It's a factual claim. It starts with the idea that, strategically, Cairo is in a good position in Egypt, a central position. This is one thing we take in schools all the time, and we repeat it, but we don't really understand the significance of this. Now, this paragraph took me three days to write because I needed to conduct research on the different eras in the history of Cairo. So, in order to justify the claim that it has been the capital of Egypt for more than 6,000 years, with different names, all right? I started with, um, Ancient Egypt, King Mina, the first king of the Old Kingdom, all right? So this is ancient Egypt, and it was founded in Memphis. Now, the second name of the capital of Cairo was Fostat. Because I'm writing in English, I have to give the reader the Arabic meaning of Fostat, the tent. It was founded in 641 AD by Amr ibn al-As, the Muslim leader. And then we move on to al Askar, another name of the capital of Cairo. The camp was founded to the northeast of Fustat in 751 AD by the Abbasid Caliphs. al qataa the wards, was founded by Ahmad ibn Tulun further to the northeast in 870 AD. Now, these are a list of sentences that are related together to show the different names of Cairo as the capital of Egypt. And then we move on to al Qahira, the victorious, was founded by Gauhar al siqilli in 969 AD. Now, I move on to argue that until then, the city was not a single unit, but a group of communities which happened to share the same location. But the founding of Al Azhar University in 970 AD established Cairo as the center of the Muslim world. So this is a, a claim and an important piece of information. And it's followed by a concluding sentence, which says, with such a long history in the making of Cairo, this grand city has attracted ancient and modern archaeologists, travelers, and writers of different nationalities and interests. Now, we have been discussing a paragraph on Cairo. Now, I would like you to look at this paragraph closely. Can you identify simple sentences, I can only identify one. And the one simple sentence is, 
Al-Qahira, the victorious, was founded by Gauhar al-Siqilli in 969 AD. Now, all the rest of the sentences are um, complex and possibly compound. Now, let's think. Can I start this paragraph by saying, with such a long history in the making of Cairo, this grand city has attracted ancient and modern archaeologists, travelers, and writers of different nationalities and interests? I can almost hear you say no, because this sentence cannot be said without introducing the long history of the making of Cairo. So logically, this sentence has to come at the end. Now, the sentence at the beginning introduces a claim, as we said before, and it says, from the strategic point of view. So this is a natural beginning for the paragraph because it introduces the central importance of the geographic position of Cairo between the delta and lower, um, uh, between the delta in lower Egypt and upper Egypt. Now, it also introduces a long time span, 6,000 years. So, this requires evidence and support. Now, the evidence and support comes in chronological order. I start with King Mina of ancient Egypt. Can I start with Gauhar al-Siqilli? Of course not. This would not be a logical arrangement of ideas. So, we start with ancient Egypt, we move on to Muslim Egypt, we move on to the Abbasid Caliphs, we move further on to Ahmed ibn Tulun until the establishment of Al-Azhar University. Now, the founding of the University of Al-Azhar in 970 AD established Cairo as the center of the Muslim world. Now, this can be introduced as a simple sentence, but with some compound elements, all right? And the compound elements involve that um, we're talking about the establishment of Al-Azhar University in Cairo and why this establishment became central to not only the history of Egypt and the history of Cairo, but central to the Muslim world. Now, your homework can be to write a similar paragraph on Alexandria, for example, or on your home city, if you live in Tanta, if you live in Benisweif, if you live in Luxor, you can write a similar paragraph about the country of your choice, and you will need to conduct research before you start writing, and then you test yourself, you write the topic sentence, you see how this topic sentence can be developed so that reading the paragraph will be a good learning experience for your reader.